One of the things I love most about China is its diversity. You're not going to find the same customs, culture, or even language everywhere you go in this country. Today I'm exploring a new area in South China and my mind is once again blown. Tell me, have you ever seen a building like this? This here is a Tulo and it's one of the most unique and interesting structures I've ever seen. So I've come here to rural Fujian province in South China to learn more about it. I'm currently in Nanjing County. It's about a four hour bus ride from Xiamen. Here, the scenery is dotted with clusters of Tulo. Tulo literally translates to earth building, which makes sense considering the fact that the walls are made primarily of mud. So at this point, you might be thinking, what is a Tulo exactly? What's going on inside that thing? Well, the short answer is each of these Tulo structures is like a village in itself. Tulo were originally built by the Hakka people who migrated south to Fujian province from central China around the 14th century. So in this way, each family has a slice of the Tulo for themselves. A bottom, a middle, and a top level. Tulo come in all shapes and sizes, round ones, square ones, you've got the typical three-storied ones, and then you've got the giants. Tulo, like the one you can see behind me here, can reach five to six stories high and house hundreds of people. The structure of this Tulo is pretty similar to the smaller Tulo. The biggest difference is instead of having only one floor for bedrooms, this one has three. I guess you can tell by just looking at a Tulo that it was built with safety and defense in mind. I guess what better way to protect your village than to turn it into a literal fortress? And it's actually said that they can withstand gunfire. And don't even think about digging underneath it. These walls extend meters underground. It's a different kind of living arrangement to what a lot of us may be used to, but it definitely has its advantages. This is a well-lit, ventilated, windproof, earthquake-proof building that's cool in summer and warm in winter. And the sense of community here definitely can't be denied. But of course, I'm not the only one fascinated by these Tulo. To say that tourism has influenced life in the Tulo would be an understatement. Here in the bigger, more popular touristic Tulo, you can find a lot of local industry, a lot of local products, people selling teas and snacks and little dried fruits. Today I've already bought two different types of tea, you know, just doing my bit to support the local economy. So yeah, the Tulo, touched by tourism, definitely had the opportunity to do quite well for themselves. 
There are hundreds of Tulo in Fujian province, but not all of them are beautifully restored and tourist friendly. Some of them, like the one behind me here, are kind of dilapidated and run down, hard to access and therefore relatively untouched by tourism. Oh wow. This Tulo here is just completely like uninhabited. It's like half torn down. It doesn't look like anyone has lived in this for hundreds and hundreds of years. I then visited this Tulo. It wasn't half demolished or anything, but it was completely empty. Hello! Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anyone here. <laughs> wow, this Tulo has been there in it. Yes, yes. Come check out this Tulo. It's uh, the lady said it has like five or six hundred years of history. Um, it looks pretty abandoned, um, but she says that people still do live here. They go outside for work and then occasionally come back. 没有旅客的土楼，他就是说没开发的那些土楼，他人没有在家，然后里面的人的话，就基本上就是老人家和小孩在家，因为很多年轻人都会出去外面上班嘛，就这样子。Definitely got a different vibe to the restored tourist-friendly tour I've seen in the past few days, but I'm really enjoying seeing what a unrestored Tulo looks like because it almost feels more authentic. This is what a Tulo would have looked like five or six hundred years ago. Authentic, not authentic, I guess it's kind of a moot point because at the end of the day, there's no one here. Like, what's a village without its people? So I guess one of the big advantages of tourism is that it brings in people to the Tulo, the locals have chance to make money off them, and they're more inclined to stay and live in their Tulo and continue their local customs. Whereas here, like, there's no one to make money off, so they've all gone. As of 2008, Tulo were declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so I guess the Tulo themselves aren't going anywhere anytime soon. For now, there are many ways that tourists can come and experience local Tulo life and contribute to the local economy. For example, there are many Tulo, like the one behind me here, that actually offer accommodation and homestays, so you can literally experience what it's like to live inside a Tulo. Let's go check in. Greeted by chickens. Meet Zhang Chengcai. He's the extremely warm and welcoming manager of Wei Chun Lo Inn. You yeah, 空气啊，空气很新鲜。嗯，你看，不需要什么口罩。I will be staying on the third floor. I have a bathroom, so I'm already living the luxury Tulo life. <laughs> and it's a room with a view. I have the most wonderful view over the Tulo courtyard. I can see all the chickens. <laughs> 今天晚上你们会做饭吗？要做饭啊！我可以跟你们一起吃饭吗？可以。你们自己种的吗？自己种的，我老婆种。Oh, I've just learned that here they are completely self-sufficient. The vegetables are from their own garden. 这个菜叫什么？那种山野菜。The eggs are from their own chickens that I've seen prancing around the courtyard today. 哦，在吃了。在吃东西了，吃饱了它就它就会跑跑去准备休息了。<笑> The eggs aren't the only thing they take from the chicken. Uh, this here boiling away is chicken soup. So nothing that they cook here is actually things that they have bought. You literally can't get fresher than this. We literally picked this out of the garden not 15 minutes ago and here it is now sitting in front of me ready to eat. This has been an absolutely amazing experience. I don't think there are many places that you can so directly connect with a local culture. I really hope you've liked this video. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you next time. Bye.